I'm gonna dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mock my words. What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be going over the debate between LiDAR and Envision for full self-driving. Who will solve it first? And why some of the reports that Tesla is not leading in autonomy are just completely off. But let's get the video started and go over a few of these clips. LiDAR is uh, lame, LiDAR is lame. <laughs> that isn't there like a case where at some point, 99999 down the road, where actually LiDAR may be helpful, and why not have it as some sort of a redundancy or backup? So that's my first question. And the second, so you can still have your um, focus on computer vision, but just have it as a redundant. And my second question is, if that is true, what happens to the rest of the industry that's building their autonomy solutions on LiDAR? They're all gonna dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mock my words. Um, I should point out that I don't actually super hate LiDAR as much as it may sound, um, but at SpaceX, uh, SpaceX Dragon uses LiDAR to navigate to the space station and dock. Not only that, we, the, SpaceX developed its own LiDAR from scratch to do that, and I spearheaded that effort personally, because in that scenario, LiDAR makes sense, and in cars, it's friggin' stupid. It's expensive and unnecessary, and as Andre was saying, once you solve vision, it, it's worthless. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. Exactly, LiDAR is extremely expensive. If you look at some of the LiDAR systems that they have on Cruise and Waymo, driving around San Francisco, it has to map the entire city. It's extremely expensive and it, doesn't, it only works for these pre-mapped areas. They have planes that are using LiDAR to map the jungle and they're finding Mayan ruins and different ruins in the Amazon. Uh, that are over that are covered by jungle that you would never be able to find but it is just a set land that it works for like you said you could use it for spacex because the rockets re land it's a set target but when you have moving variables and you know people cutting across people biking an insane cost by having these lidar systems on every single car which doesn't seem reasonable or profitable or you just solve vision completely which you've seen they're using the same computer for full self-driving as they are for the Optimus bot. So it doesn't have just one use. This is gonna help expand Tesla as a whole where they're just using this LiDAR system that can only be used in these pre-mapped sections that's not fully reliable. The autonomous driving you just do with some sensors, LiDAR, radar, is that what this, or do you need more? Uh, we, we believe just, uh, just cameras are yeah, the way okay. to go. Um, we don't use LiDAR at all. Uh, the, the entire road network is designed for passive optical, yeah. essentially vision. So um, if you, in order to make a car drive properly, you have to solve uh, vision. Mm. And at the point at which you solve vision, mm. you really don't need any other instruments. Mm. Okay. Um, like a careful driver, human driver, yeah. um, can, can drive with an extremely good track record. Yeah. Um, and the, the, unlike a computer, unlike a, a human, the, the computer does not get tired. Yeah. Um, it has uh, 360 degree surround cameras. Yeah. It's got three cameras pointing forward. Uh, so it's like being able to see with eyes in the back of your head, basically. Yeah. Um, so it, it's really, um, vision is the way to go. Uh, there's some value to um, active optical uh, for a wavelength that's mm -hmm. occlusion penetrating, so mm -hmm. it can see through fog or rain or dust. Mm -hmm. um, but it has to be high resolution, such that you can rely on, like for example, for radar at uh, roughly uh, four millimeter wavelength, uh, this is a good for occlusion penetration, yeah. um, and uh, but it needs it needs to have enough resolution to know that you're breaking for a real object and not just a bridge or yeah, yeah. a manhole cover yeah, or something sure. like that. Once you hear Elon talk about it, it almost seems obvious. Um, we have a, a gimbal or a selfie stick as our neck. We have two GoPros or cameras as our eyes, and we're able to drive. Now add that to eight to twelve cameras around the car neural net system like our brains and that's going to figure out how to drive and as it gets better and better and better like i said earlier it could be used for optimus it could be used for just general ai so i don't think lidar is ever going to work i agree with elon that they're just going to end up dumping it maybe tesla can sell it as a software for these other companies which could be an amazing money maker but i think these other companies are in for kind of a rude awakening over the, the next few years, realizing, wow, we can't solve it. Or you just have, like what Cruise is doing, you just have little 
a little robo taxi network in certain um, high density areas that's just on a basically like a train track uh, for a car instead of having the tracks you know it could just drive certain set roads but ultimately the car that you're going to want is going to be able to you know pull out of the parking spot you know come pick you up take you to where you need to go and then you know you can get out of the car in front of the mall and it'll go park itself and then pick you up when you want to leave the mall again or when you want to leave work it's just an overall better system and i don't think any other company is going to be able to compete with it in the future basically you would think that these sensors are an asset to you yeah but if you fully consider the entire product in its entirety these sensors are actually potentially a liability uh, because these sensors aren't free. They don't just appear on your car. You need, suddenly you need to have an entire supply chain. You have people procuring it. Uh, there can be problems with them. They may need replacement. They are part of the manufacturing process. They can hold back the line in the production. Uh, you need to source them. You need to maintain them. You have to have teams that write the firmware, all of, the, all of it. And then uh, you also have to incorporate them, fuse them into the system in some way. And so it actually like bloats the organi the, a lot of it. And I think Elon is really good at simplify, simplify. Best part is no part. Mm -hmm. And he always tries to throw away things that are not essential because he understands the entropy in organizations and in approach. And I think uh, in this case, the cost is high and you're not potentially seeing it if you're just a computer vision engineer. And I'm just trying to improve my network and you know, is it more useful or less useful? How, how useful is it? And the thing is, if once you consider the full cost of a sensor, it actually is potentially a liability. And you need to be really sure that it's giving you extremely useful information. In this case, we looked at using it or not using it, and the delta was not massive. And so it's not useful. It's just an amazing point right there is you have to have a whole supply chain, the cost, and really what if it doesn't work and or you know it's faulty with solving vision for Optimus or other products that they can have. And it can work anywhere in the world and not preset mapped places not even mentioning how absolutely expensive a LiDAR system is. And can you really get it on uh, all your car systems or or you're just gonna be just set to like a predetermined area, which to me is useless. What do you think about the LiDAR as a crutch debate? Uh, the battle between point clouds and pixels. Yeah, I think this debate is uh, always like slightly confusing to me because it seems like the actual debate should be about like, do you have the fleet or not? That's like the really important thing about whether you can achieve a really good functioning of an AI system mm. at this scale. So data collection uh, systems. Yeah, do you have a fleet or not is significantly more important whether you have LiDAR or not. It's just another sensor. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, similar to uh, the radar discussion, basically, I, um, I, yeah, I don't think it, it um, basically doesn't offer extra uh, extra information. It's extremely costly. It has all kinds of problems. You have to worry about it. You have to calibrate it, etc. It creates bloat and entropy. You have to be really sure that you need this, uh, this um, sensor. In this case, I basically don't think you need it. And I think, honestly, I will make a stronger statement. I think the others, uh, some of the other uh, companies who are, that are using it are probably going to drop it. Yeah, so you have to consider the sensor in the full in c considering, can you build a big fleet that collects a lot of data? And can you integrate that sensor with the, that, that data and that sensor into a data engine that's able to quickly find different yep. parts of the data that then continuously improves whatever the model that you're using? Yeah, another way to look at it is like vision is necessary in the sense that uh, the drive uh, the world is designed for human visual consumption, so you need vision. It's necessary. And then also it is sufficient. Uh, because it has all the information that you that you need for driving, and humans obviously have vision to drive. So it's both necessary and sufficient. So you want to focus resources, and you have to be really sure if you're going to bring in other sensors. You could you could you could add uh, sensors to infinity. At some point, you need to draw the line. And I think in this case, you have to really consider the full um, cost of any one sensor that you're adopting, and do you really need it? And I think the answer in this case is no. And Elon's always been amazing at understanding. The best part is no part and just simplifying. And they're one of the only companies that can even make a profitable EV right now is because he truly understands the best part is no part. So what do you think about the idea of the, that the other companies are forming high resolution maps and constraining heavily the geographic regions in which they operate? Is that approach not in your, in your view, um, not going to scale over time to the entirety of the United yep. States. 
I think, take too as long. you mentioned, like they pre-map all the environments and they need to refresh the map. And they have a perfect centimeter level accuracy map of everywhere they're going to drive. It's crazy. How are you going to, when we're talking about autonomy actually changing the world, we're talking about a deployment on a, on a global scale of autonomous systems for transportation. And if you need to maintain a centimeter accurate map for Earth <laughs> or like for many cities and keep them updated, it's a huge uh, dependency that you're taking on, huge dependency. It's it's a massive, massive dependency. And now you need to ask yourself, do you really need it? And humans don't need it, um, right? So it's it's very useful to have a low-level map of like, okay, the connectivity of your road, you know that there's a fork coming up. Uh, when you drive an environment, you sort of have that high-level understanding. It's like a small Google map. And uh, Tesla uses Google map, uh, like similar kind of mm -hmm. resolution information in its system, but it will not pre-map environments to centimeter level accuracy. It's a crutch. It's a distraction. It costs entropy and it uh, diffuses the team. It dilutes the team. And you're not focusing on what's actually necessary, which is the computer vision problem. Exactly, too, is LiDAR is so expensive. Really what you need to solve full self-driving is have it's through machine learning and through neural nets, and it needs as much data as possible. Inputting data into the systems is what's going to help increase its competency over time. Same with you know DeepMind, uh, with chess, and needs to just play as many games over and over and over and over again until it starts to master it. So if you have say only 20 cars driving around San Francisco, it can only get a limited amount of miles. Tesla now has th millions of cars out on the road that have their you know eight to 12 cameras. Um, just recording everything and getting it sent back to Tesla's supercomputers. And it's just slowly, slowly, slowly perfecting how to drive in all roads in all conditions where these other companies have a LiDAR system, a super expensive LiDAR system, only put on a few cars and it's going around mapping certain areas and has all these conditions of when it can and can't drive. To me, it's not even comparable to what uh, Tesla will be able to do at some point within the next few years of just being completely better than even a human, completely safer. It'll see things that you won't even be able to see. It has eyes in the back of the car, on the side. It's just humans won't even be able to compete with it. So I just think almost eventually either they're going to have to just license this out to other companies and maybe it'll be in the best for them in that sense. Um, and not to get me wrong, I want all companies to solve full self-driving. It terrifies me how there's, you know, 80 plus year olds driving around that can barely see. When you're 16, I was a complete idiot when I was driving when I was 16, going, you know, super fast on the freeway. I had friends that would race and just acting completely crazy. And we have these old people, people drink and drive and are on drugs. It's like, how many people, you know, I'm from LA, are literally on pills, doing some sort of drugs, you know, high, drunk, and go out and drive? I honestly think it's an insane percentage that are out doing that every single day. It just, it's honestly just, I want it so bad as a, you know, for me, for my safety of everyone I know, full self-driving, I, I want it to work so bad and these other companies that are using a just worse system. And it's like, if you, are you really gonna trust GM and some of these other companies to really outcompete with Elon? NASA won't even ever, probably most likely ever have reusable rockets. So it's like, if this guy is saying that it's not gonna work the way that you're using, you must just have, if Elon's saying it's not gonna work, you must have a massive ego if you're gonna, every single car company in the world is using one way and then Elon's using a different way, I'd probably change my system and be like, let's do what they're doing or find some way to work with them because this is just a basic system that is not gonna work. Who's a go? Oh, hey, it's Tim. Pick up truck plus SUV talk. If you can see him, that's my buddy Frank. We were driving to the Springs, or to the Cheyenne, I should say. We're on I-80 and I had to drive an hour south because I want to use Blue Cruise, which is their new autonomous driving system available in the Mach-E and also the Ford F-50. So I feel like that kind of proves my point. If you heard what he said, he has to drive an hour to go use his self-driving. Just how does that even compete? How does that compare? Like <laughs> you, you have to drive, it's on pre-mapped 
roads, it's just not an overall system. This isn't going to be able to work in in Mexico, in Brazil, in Australia, unless you pre-map everything there. So it's like, it can work on certain highways in these certain areas. I mean, sure, it, it works for, you know, a certain population and it, you know, kind of works, but it's just who's going to want that when there's some car that will potentially be cheaper and it'll work anywhere you want to go in parking lots, on freeways, in city streets, solves it anywhere. Why would you get this one that is more expensive and can only go on certain highways? Oh, it doesn't work in my city. And here we have a Chinese YouTube channel testing out different uh, cars. Uh, mo all of them have LiDAR except one, which is uh, Tesla Model 3. And they do a little, they do a few different tests. I'm gonna show one test where they're doing a turn at night on an intersection and a fake you know, a person runs by and not one of them stopped except the Tesla. Yeah,能更早的发现弯道中的障碍。位移制动反应流出更多时间。虽然意外的是，特斯拉Model 3在这个场景下居然成功实现了避让，而且是很早就发现了小朋友并缓缓刹停。我们还发现刹停后，特斯拉又往后退了一点。我们猜测这可能是动能回收标定导致的现象。如果您last thing, uh, consumer report put out a report talking about the levels of autonomy and how Ford Blue Cruise was number one and Chevy Chevy Super Cruise was number two. It had nine out of 10 for its capabilities, but we saw it only works in certain pre-mapped areas. You have to drive an hour to even get there for that guy's circumstance. And then nine out of 10 for keeping drivers engaged. If you watch the whole video, you'd see why the driver keeps the driver engaged because he constantly has to grab the wheel and you know restart it or you're you're engaged because you're scared that it's not going to work and it might freaking drive off the freeway so that's why i think tesla got a let's see what it got got a three out of ten in keeping the driver engaged so basically it's saying the tesla was so good that you almost don't need to pay attention, so it's gonna give it a lower score on its autonomy because you don't need to pay attention where, yeah, it's just hilarious how the way that they're grading is making it seem like one that makes you constantly grab the wheel or constantly have to pay attention because you're scared it's gonna drive into the other lane, <laughs> that it's gonna have a better score than the Tesla. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous, but that's it for today, guys. My name is Sean on the Tesla Hyperbowl. Thank you guys for watching.